to reign. That is who you are. That is who we are. In Christ Jesus, by the power of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everything that has been holding you down, tying you down, the Lord will loose you from them this year. In the name of Jesus, but you must be ready to run. You must be ready to rule. You must be ready to reign because the Lord has destined you to be somebody great. Has destined you to take your place in life. Has destined you to be who he has ordained for you to be. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Declare that this year is my year. This year is my year. I am going up higher. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let those who will stay in Egypt land. I am bound for Canaan. This year, 2016, I am bound for Canaan. I am going to Canaan. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus name we pray. Father we are grateful unto thee for who you are. We thank you father for the challenges we have received. From the youth choir. From the adult choir. Telling us Lord that there is a goal before us. Uh, that our destination is spiritual Canaan. That our destination is a place of victory. That our destination is a place of success. Uh, that our destination is a place of excellence. All those who will may stay back in Egypt. All those who will may stay back in poverty. All those who will may stay back uh, in their life of rejection uh, and, uh, 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 and separation. But by the grace of God. God, we have come to realize uh, that we are destined for victory. We are destined for success uh, and that is who you, who we are. We are men of authority. We are men of power and this year by the power of the Lord, we are going to take charge. Uh, we are going to take authority. We are going to take control and we are possessing our possessions in Jesus' name. Speak to us right now, O oh Lord, and bless us as we share together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to someone and say, who are you? I say, turn to someone and say, who are you? If you're not getting an answer, I have an answer for you about who I am. I said, I have an answer for you about who I am. I can tell you I am the man in charge. I'm the man of authority. I'm the one in control. I'm the one to rule. I'm the one to reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord because this is your year. Because this is my year. Because this is our year. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Actually, today we are talking about foreign exchange. I know that may be a very strange language to some of you. And uh, understand uh, when we talk about foreign, it means something that you have not really known. It seems something that is not familiar with you. It means something that you are not used unto foreign somebody say foreign this year foreign blessings are coming your way in jesus name and then when we use the word exchange it means i'm giving you what i have and then you are giving me what you have do you understand this year something is about to happen and you know this is our first combined service this year and the lord is preparing us for great great accomplishments this year in jesus name Foreign exchange, foreign exchange. Traveling to a foreign land requires uh, three major things. Number one, you need your passport. They call it international passport. Did you get that? Did you get that? International passport. That simply means that why you belong to this country, you have the right to partake and uh, go to the other country. So, international. Somebody say international. 
uh, uh, some people will say intercontinental. That means, listen, you, we use some words that we don't quite understand. Uh, it, when you say international, you can go from this country and go to the next neighboring country. You can go to country A and then within a few minutes you're in the other country, uh, country. But when you now go a little further and then you say intercontinental. In a continent, there are a lot of nations that forms that continent uh, and then it means you pass through all the nations within that continent and then you get to another continent entirely. i give you an example. When you are here in America, which continent are you? You are in the North America. Praise the Lord. And then when you now leave the North America and then you cross over to uh, Europe. Are you in the same continent? That's a different continent. When you leave Europe and then you cross over to Africa, how about that? That's a different continent. Now, this is the point I'm making. It is wanting to enjoy the blessings within the continent of the world. But this year, we are going beyond the earthly continent. We are getting to the heavenly continent. How about that? How about that? That is why you need to understand that you're a man, you're a woman, you're a child of destiny, a child of authority, a woman of authority, a man of authority. And this year, the authority of God upon your life will be put to work and all eyes will see in Jesus' name. Because with your international passport, I will tell you in addition to the international passport, how many things do I say you need? three things. Uh, the second thing is the visa, the approval. The approval, if you are, those of you, most of you are foreigners. Talk to someone and say, you are a foreigner. <laughs> I'll tell them, I'll say, you too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, before you go cross over, even though you have your international passport, that means your your resident country has allowed you and given you the right to travel the other country you are going the other foreign country you are going also needs to approve your coming to their country um, are you are you with me now and by the, their way of approving your coming is they will give you something called visa do you have the visa if you have your international passport and you don't have visa, you still cannot go. But with the visa, the seal of heaven upon your life, something is going to happen this year. Now, pay attention here. There are some people, they do everything possible. They get the international passports. They do everything possible. They get the visa. And then they travel to that country without the foreign exchange. <coughs> if you are from Ghana, <laughs> praise God. And then you go with uh, your CDs and uh, best right. Amen? Whatever they spend over there. Or you are from uh, Syria alone. Or from Gabon. And then you carry your country money. Amen? And then you have your box loaded with money. I know about Ghana more. And when they say one million cities in Ghana, ha, when you hear the word million, you think that is a lot of money. By the time you come over to America, you realize that maybe you're only having $10. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you ready for God this morning? Yes. Amen. And then not just that, what you are having is nothing. Only to realize you got to the airport, the first thing you needed is you need to get the buggy, the cart, to put your load on. And then you need to pay money to get that. And then you bring your Ghanaian money out. And they look at, and, and they, what is this? You said money. It is non-negotiable here. It is unacceptable here. You need American dollar. Somebody say American dollar. 
to spend in America. To spend in America. But then, but then pay attention here. This is the mystery of God here. We are here in the world. Here in the world. But we are going to get the economy of heaven and enjoy it here on earth. How about that? That means, that means, even though you are in Ghana, you have American dollar, look at this, even though you are still in Ghana, and then anybody, everybody sees that you have American dollar, how do they look at, how do they look at you? They look at you special. Turn to someone and say, this year I am special. And so what we are going to do is, Combine these three things, the passports, the visa, and what? The foreign exchange. The foreign exchange. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But then you know there are some other people. They come to church. They sing with us. They pray with us. But they are not part of all. They are not kings like us. They are not priests like us. They are not royal priesthood like us. When they stand, there, will, there is no shaking in heaven. When they speak, nobody recognizes their voice. Because one, they do not have the passport. Number two, they do not have the visa less of making use of the foreign exchange. They come to church as we come. They sit as we seek. Sit. Uh, they sing as we sing. They pray as we pray. They even quote the Bible together with us. But heaven has no reckon for them because they are not saved. Because they are not sanctified. Because they are not spirit filled. They cannot tap into the resources of heaven to use while here on earth. That is why this year, by the grace of God, beginning today, you will get everything to enjoy life in Jesus' name. Turn with me very quickly your Bible to the book of Peter. To the book of Peter. And let us see what the scripture has gotten to tell us there because the word of God has made it very clear unto us that God in his mercy, God in his love, God in his power has given unto us all that pertains unto life and godliness. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. If you are there, if you are there, if you are there very quickly, chapter 1 of Second Peter, verse 3. Shall we all read together? Won't you go? According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. This year, your life will be glorious. This year, your family will be glorious. This year, everything you lay your hands upon to do will be glorious in Jesus' name. But please pay attention here very closely. Get your pen and paper and write. And uh, make sure you get this message and listen to it again and again. Just one time may not be enough. Because what you're going through, you may have been going through it for so long. You need to get this message. Listen to it again. Let it sink into you. Pray it in again. Pray it out again until you begin to see something happen in your life, in your family, and in everything that you do. So pay attention. Today, as we deal with this foreign exchange, spiritual foreign exchange, understand that Everything that happens in the physical, first of all, had taken place in the spirit. Do you understand? So, if you're here on earth, you're poor. You are already poor in the spirit. 
If you're here on earth, you are suffering. You're already suffering in the spirit realm. You have been destined to suffer. If you're here on earth, you are barren. In the spirit realm, you have been destined to be barren. It may be financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness, matrimonial barrenness, all kinds of barrenness. It's not only having children alone that we talk about barrenness. Battles of life are either won or lost, first of all, in the spirit. That is why many a times you are dealing with the physical, you are wasting your time. You need to get on your knees and get the victory won on your, on, on your knee. If you will go down on your knee, you will be able to stand tall with men. That is what we need to understand. Every tree that, ha that, that have their strength, uh, every tree that you see standing, with their branches, their leaves, fruits, and everything, the strength carrying them is not physical. It is under the ground. And that is why this year, we are going to be digging deep in Jesus' name. The Bible says that the carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. So, if you don't understand what you're talking about, you say, don't mind them. Don't mind them. Well, you will be it yourself. It takes spiritually minded and action people to understand and overcome the natural challenges and the tendencies of life that are physical. The famine, as well as the prosperity, you turn it around, the prosperity and the famine that came upon Egypt at the time of Joseph. Did you know already took place in the spirit before it became real in real life. Pharaoh had a dream. You remember the dream of Pharaoh? And Pharaoh could not understand the dream because it is already settled in the spirit that this is what is going to happen. Many a times, the things happening in your life, you don't have clue. You don't have understanding. And then, you are fighting with man. Stop fighting man. Again, get on your knees. It was with the mind of the spirit and the power of the Lord that Joseph came around and then interpreted the dream. And the dream happened exactly as Joseph interpreted them. Joseph himself was known to be a dreamer. A dreamer. A dreamer. And Joseph saw the sheaves bowing down unto him. Joseph saw the stars falling down before him. All those were spiritual things that were already in place before the real life manifestation. Please understand that God is expecting you to take charge of your life this year. Is expecting to take charge of your family this year. And it will make a way for you in Jesus' name. Eventually, the stars, the chiefs, they bowed down for Joseph. Your enemies will bow for you. Principalities and powers will bow for you. The who is who, those are the stars. The people in charge, they will find you, they will meet you, and they will bow for you in Jesus' name. Understand that causes and blessings are already rooted in the spirit before they are manifested in the life. Look at Jacob and Esau. You see the battle they had in life they did not begin after they were born. It started long before they were born. Understand? Their mother in Genesis chapter 25 had an issue with the pregnancy and then inquired. To cut a long story short, he was told that two nations are inside of you. Two nations. And then two people are there. 
And the Bible says they were not born at that time. The Bible says that the older shall do what? Shall serve the younger one. Settled in the spirit. Settled in the spirit. I declare that this year in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be a slave. I refuse to be a servant. Every destiny of slavery I cancel in your life, in this church, in Jesus' name. There is a man that is called Perez and another one called Zara. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 38. Look at it. Genesis 38, verses 29 and 30. And it came to pass as he drew his hand that behold, his brother came out and she said, How hast thou broken forth? This year you are breaking forth. This year you are breaking through. This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Perez. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand. And his name was called Zerah. Let me tell you the story. You can go and read more about it yourself in that chapter. This lady was to give birth. And she was carrying twins, twin boys, in her tummy. And at the labor room, one of the children brought the hand forth, wanting to come out. And then the midwife, they quickly tied a scarlet on the hand. So to be able to differentiate between the first and the second one. But there was a battle within listen to this there is a battle for your soul there is a battle for your success there is a battle for your place in life you will win that battle and as the battle was raging the one that was behind the one behind was perez the one ahead was Zara. It was Zara that put forth the hand and said, I am going. And Perez soon said, No, you're going nowhere. And Perez pulled Zara back. And Perez show forth. This year, you are showing forth. Every force and power trying to pull you back, the Lord will destroy in Jesus' name. And so Perez came out first to the place of Zara. Nobody will take your place. I said, nobody, you will take your place in the name of Jesus. And that is why we need to pay attention to the book of Isaiah chapter 61. I look at it from verses 1 to 2, 3. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that's why I'm here today. I said, that is why I'm here today. God has sent me to you this first month of the year. To break yokes in your life. To lose bounds in your life. And it shall be so in Jesus name. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that spirit of the Lord is coming upon you this year in Jesus name. Because you are not going to be let loose. You are going to be equipped. You are going to be empowered. And you are going to be engaged in the work of the Lord in Jesus name. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can I hear you say that? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. One more time. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It's coming on you in Jesus name. I read further. Because the Lord has anointed me. To preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim what's the next two things liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Rejoice because God has you in mind. Verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And what year is that year? I said, What year is that year? And the day of vengeance of our God. And what day is that day? I say, what day is that day? Today, God will avenge for you. 
Today, God will defend your cause. Today, God will fight for you in Jesus' name to comfort. What's the next word? All. I don't care your background. I don't care your situation. I don't care for how long you'll be going through that situation. The word of the Lord says, comfort is coming your way in Jesus' name. To comfort, to comfort them that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them what? Beauty for I can't hear somebody. Beauty for arches. Beauty all the arches of your life. You will look for them. You will not find them anymore in Jesus' name. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called peace of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, uh, that he might be glorified. This year you'll, in your life, God will be glorified. I said God will be glorified. That's why as we look at this spiritual foreign exchange, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual chain. We are going to take all that we have, we hand over to the Lord, and then He is going to take all that He has, He hands over to us. And all these are things in the spirit. That's why when you pray, it's not just a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. You are dealing with principalities, for we wrestle not with against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we are doing. So, you want to take it serious. You know, sometimes you see some people, they say, they are praying and they are still talking with somebody. They are praying and they are still busy doing some other thing. Whenever all those are happening, it is the distraction of the enemy. You know, we travel to Africa, for the Congress with many other pastors. And this particular day, uh, somebody from over there said uh, he listened to my message before. To cut a long story short, while we're driving, they picked that message, Divine Favor. And then we listened to it, and then we got the point in the message. It's a message I preached here some years back. And then we got to a point and we stopped the message and we began to pray. And we began to pray. We were still driving, but we began to pray. The prayer was so severe and powerful. I don't know for how long, but without planning that we were going to pray, we, I mean, the Holy Ghost just took over. We didn't even finish listening to the message. And not quite some minutes after we started that prayer, then, from nowhere, my phone began to ring. The first one rang. I didn't look at it. Because I know the devil is up to something. The second one rang. I didn't look. Within that period of time, all the calls that did not come from the beginning of the day to that time began to come in. Every distraction this year, the Lord will destroy in Jesus' name. By the time it was all over, I knew why the cause were coming in. But the victory was won already. This year is a year of victory. In the name of Jesus. We are getting to the, into the economy of God this year. Not American economy. Not your own economy. Whose economy? God's economy. In, uh, in America, we use the presidential uh, system of government. Am I right? And then in the system of government, we have what we call the three tiers of government. Do you still remember? I'm now taking you back to, to high school and to college so that you can know your government again. Amen. And then a little bit of politics. Amen. And then what's the first uh, tier of the government? I can't hear you. The executive branch, the second one. I'm not, they don't call it Congress. <laughs> The judiciary, thank you, was the last one? The legislature. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
do you know that America got that from the Bible? The executive, the judiciary, the legislature. From the Bible. And that is what they are using to rule their nation. Open your Bible. You say, Pastor, where did you get that again? Open your Bible. Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. Now, you have to pay for this one because this is a revelation. Amen. Verse 22. Verse 22. We'll read first and then we'll interpret next. Are you there already? Okay, shall we read together? One, two, go. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Shall we read that again? For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let's, let's now look at that same verse again. When it says, the Lord is our judge. What is that talking about? The judiciary. Amen. The Lord is our lawgiver. What is that? The legislature. And then, the Lord is our king. What is that? The executive. The executive. The exe now you can understand that everything happening around you this year is ordained of God. God is in charge. God will take control. God will make a way in the name of Jesus. And uh, no matter what you are been through, no matter what you are going through, the Lord will make a way for you in Jesus' name. Understand, I am uh, taking, you know, I've not even mentioned my point one. No point two yet, no point three, and I'm still getting there. I need to wet the ground very well so that when you begin to walk, every dust will disappear. And there will be no sleeping in Jesus' name. I am doing all this because there are some people that are foreign to joy. Joy is foreign to them. They don't know joy. Peace is foreign to them. They don't know peace. Happiness is far from them. They don't know happiness. While others are giving testimony, maybe we should even give room for testimony today. I said maybe we should give room for testimony. That from the beginning of the year, you have a testimony of what God is already doing. You know, why people are giving testimony about promotion in their life, all they know is demotion. All they know is dejection. All they know is disappointment. And it's like, Lord, why is my life like this? When people are giving testimony of success, they cannot stand up to say, this is my own, because their life is full of for, uh, 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 failure. All those good things and great things that are foreign to you, they are coming your way. I said they are coming your way. I said they are coming your way. The Lord will take your sickness away. He will take your infirmity away. All the failures and disappointments, the grief and the affliction and the torment, the power of God will take them away in Jesus' name. Maybe you are right now at your breaking point. I declare to you that in the name of Jesus, you will not break. Instead of you breaking, you are breaking forth. You are breaking out. To the right, you are breaking forth. To the left, you are breaking forth. Front and back, you are breaking forth in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Isaiah 35 verse 4, it says, Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. God is coming with vengeance. I said God is coming with vengeance. All that have held you back, all that have held you down, all that have tied you down, the fire of God, the thunder of God, will shatter them all in Jesus' name. Even God with the recompense, he will come and save you. 
he will come and save you he will come and save you in jesus name isaiah 25 9 says and it shall be said in that day in that day and this is that day no this is our god we have waited for him you have waited since you were born since you were growing up you have waited you have waited for him and he will save us this is the lord we are waiting for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. Isaiah 34 verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompense. Did you hear that? It is the day of the Lord's vengeance. This is that day. That the Lord will look around and say... You demon, enough is enough. Principality, enough is enough. And God will destroy them all in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, it is the year. The year. Now, if you don't pay close attention to your Bible, you just read and you just move on. It say, it is the day of what? Vengeance. Somebody say vengeance. Vengeance. It, it means it is a day of punishment for all your enemy and then it says it is the year of recompense recompense i know the word recompense is a very big grammar that some of us may not understand recompense simply means it's a year of payment it means it's a year of reward it's a year of remuneration it's a year of compensation it's a year of restitution. That's what the Bible was telling us in Joel when it says, all the years that the locusts have eaten and the palm worm destroyed, the Lord will restore back unto you. And this is that year for you in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 2. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Somebody just missed that that your her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received of the lord's hand double for all her sins in jesus name is i don't care what you have done before the lord is saying this is a year of forgiveness it's a year of pardon for you in jesus name i love this i love this isaiah chapter 49 I look at it from verse 4 and I look at verse 25. Don't stop in verse 4. If you stop in verse 4, you will live the same life you have lived for many years. But as you graduate and then you jump into verse 25, it says, Then I said, and that's what you've been saying, I have labored in vain. That has been your testimony. That's why you couldn't come out to share with the brethren. I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing. And in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord. And my work with my God. There is hope for that one. And this is that day of judgment. You've labored in vain in the time past. You've done everything. that There is no reward. Verse 25. But thus says the Lord. And who is God talking to here today? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with those with them that contend with thee. And I will save thy children. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. That simply means because of your life of sin, because of your transgression, because of your background, lawfully you are a captive. And the Lord is saying because this is the day of vengeance. 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 He will avenge your cause in Jesus' name. And the Lord will help you. And the Lord will keep you. God wants me to test somebody according to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, that the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarry, the Bible says what? Wait for it. Tell somebody wait for it. 
Tell somebody, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Your time of blessing is now. Your time of pro 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 promotion is now. Your time of prosperity is now. The Lord has chosen to remember you for good in Jesus' name. Shall we get into our point one, two, three now? Shall we get into our point one, two, three now? I know you are ready for prayer, but please, before you pray, let's get into point one. Number one, the power of exchange. The power of exchange. Number two, number two, the provision through the exchange. The provision through the exchange. Number three, the promises through the exchange. The power of the exchange. Which exchange are we talking about? Come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. Now, Jesus gave his life for you and for me. He died that we might live. That is the exchange we're talking about. That is the exchange that we're talking about. Uh, and uh, as you gave yours unto him, he gives his unto you. That's why if you're here today, coming to church is not enough. Saying, I'm a member of deeper life, is not enough. You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The power of the exchange. Jesus died for us that we might have life. For, for, for the enemy, the chief, come at none. But for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come. I said, I am come that you might have life and have it how? Abundantly, abundantly. That is the power of the exchange. He took your shame. He took your sorrow. He took your sickness. He took your infirmity. He took your affliction. He took your rejection. He gave you the blessings from heaven. That is the exchange. That is the exchange. If you are not yet born again, you will not understand what we are talking about. That's why you need to give your life to Christ Jesus. And be saved. To be saved is to repent of your sin, confess them, renounce them, and begin to live a new life in Christ Jesus. To be saved is to live a life that is completely and totally sin free. To be saved is now to be reckoned with by God as a real child of God. Because you have traded your sin for his purity. And now he's ruling and reigning in your life. The power of the exchange. When you become a real child of God, like father cares, like father and the mother cares for their children. God takes over the control of your life. He clothes you. He feeds you. He provides for you. He shelters you. He takes you to where you need to go without you spending anything. The power of the exchange. The power of the exchange. And if you are there, the Bible tells us, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, that Christ Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was brewed for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Now, you are sick in your body. You have been diagnosed with an infirmity. You know, uh, I was it uh, last week. I just came uh, from uh, uh, Nigeria and then I got a call from Baltimore. And then this sister said, my father in Ghana... Um, had this problem and they had stroke and couldn't talk and totally paralyzed and uh, no hope uh, and uh, was going to die. And she said, please, pastor, if you can help me pray for my father. And I said, okay, call Ghana 
and then get somebody there to stand by him and then connect me. And then she did that over the phone. Somebody say over the phone. God still works miracle. And then she connected and I prayed and I told the person over there, what is your name? He said, I said, okay, lay your hand upon him right now as we pray. The sister from Baltimore was on the line. I was on the line. They are on the line in Ghana. And then we prayed. The sister later called back and said, Pastor, my father now is talking. My father now is okay. And the father now said, who is that person that prayed for me? The father asked the question. I wasn't there. She was telling me. And then she now said, that is my regional overseer. And the father said, his prayer is powerful. This year, your prayers will be powerful. Your prayers will be effective anywhere you go in Jesus' name. So, don't be afraid of anything. You know, you, I could have felt, ah, it's far away. What do we do right now? I just pray. No, I felt led. Let somebody lay hands on him. Is any sick among you? Let him pray. Is any afflicted? Let him call upon the elders of the church. Amen? Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Will, be, will heal the sick. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, you will cast out devils. This year, you have somebody is sick. What do you do? Ah, call 911. Are you very close to the hospital? This year, what do you do? Turn to someone and say, pray. pray. Tell somebody, pray. Let the first thing you do not be rushing to the hospital, rushing to man. You know, uh, was it last month? Last month, December, there about November, December, November, December, somebody came to me, a medical doctor, that we normally will run to and say, Pastor, please pray for me. I have this problem. I have been diagnosed with cancer. Now, I said that to say that the doctors themselves, they need help. You are running unto them. They are trial and error. If it works, good. If it doesn't work, but we have somebody who never fear. His name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You see the way I'm talking? It's not, it's not, I'm not boasting about my power. Who am I? I'm boasting about him that has absolute power, that has absolute authority. The one that will kill and nobody can make alive. The one that if he says yes, nobody can say no. And if he says no, nobody can say yes. I'm talking about the one that has the total control over your life. The one that will break through for you. Make a way for you and deliver you in Jesus' name. And so, the power of the exchange, our sickness is traded for his life of purity, righteousness, holiness, and uprightness. He gave his life. He died for us that we might live. He was wounded and became sick that we might be healed. And that is why he was rejected that we might be accepted. You know, we're strangers and aliens to God. But Jesus, the power of exchange, he became rejected. You say, how did that happen? Look at the Bible. In the book of Matthew 27, 46. 27 verse 46. And about the ninth hour, that's about 3 p.m. Jesus cried with a loud voice. Say, Eli, Eli, Lamax Abakjani, that he is to say, somebody help me here, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Pay attention here. What happened there did not just happen. It is a spiritual thing predicted many years back. Many years back. Right from the Garden of Eden, the prophecy had come, spiritual, 
that the devil will bruise the heel of the son. And the son will do what? Bruise his head. In your life, the head of the devil is crushed. And then David in the Psalms 22 verse 1. What Jesus said in Matthew was actually already there in the Psalm. Jesus was actually quoting what has been written concerning him. Look at it in Psalm 22 verse, uh, verse 1. There it says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why hast thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. That's, that was in the psalm. Now, there is a fulfillment in the New Testament. And that's why I'm telling you that many of the things happening in your life are not just accidental. They have been there. And except you do something, that may be the thing that will kill you. Except you do something. You know, I tell you there are some people that have the passport, they have the visa, and yet the foreign exchange is not there. They are born again truly. They are saved truly. But they don't realize that they need to do something about the affliction in their life, about the torment in their life, about the oppression in their life, about the satanic manipulations going on in their life, that they need to take their position, that they need to take their sound, and that they need to call upon the name of the Lord and uh, Turn things around. Turn things around. Every destiny destroyers in your life shall be destroyed by the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Jesus suffered that we might be free. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18. For Christ also had once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. But quickened by the spirit. Christ became poor that we might be rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. He became poor that we might be rich. Pay attention here. If you are here, you say you are a believer and you are still poor. I pity you. Amen? Slap the person next to you and say, are you poor? I say slap the person, say, I'm the other person and say, are you poor?